All right, this is SSL Family Dad with Simple Suburban Living, and today we're going to show you how to change the rear brakes and rotors on a Chevy Traverse. All right, so this process that we're going to use today is uh, very basic. It's very easy. It's, uh, you know, I guess on a skill level, it's an amateur or very low skill level. Anybody can do this uh, with some very basic tools. Um, the process we're going to use today is very similar, almost identical to the front brakes and rotors. They're, they're, there's only minor differences, so you could you know follow along with this video and do all your brakes uh, on, a, on a Traverse. This also is the same process for any like model vehicle. Now, we're working with a 2009 model here, uh, but this is the same for your Arcadias and or Acadias and uh, um, Enclaves and uh, all the other GM branded uh, SUVs that are similar to the Traverse um, and for just about every year the, the process is, is almost identical so if you check this video out you can get the idea on just about any uh, Chevy uh, mini SUV like this so let's first dig into what we need to get started Okay, so just to go through some of the tools that you will need um, to get this job done. A uh, 14 millimeter socket, and it doesn't matter what you drive you're using for that. I'm using it on a 3 inch, 3 eighths socket or 3 eighths driver. Um, a Torx bit. This is a T30 Torx bit. Now, you'll only need this if you're going to be doing the whole rotor replacement as well. If you're just doing your brake pads only and your rotors are in good shape, you will not need this. Um, I will put a link to one of these in the description to uh, this uh, T30 over on Amazon. Um, if you're ordering everything together, you can get this as well. A lot of people don't have those. Um, you will also need a 21 millimeter uh, socket, and I'm using this on a half inch drive uh, or half inch uh, socket wrench. You will need a little more power to get uh, uh, these nuts or bolts off as well. So, a couple other things that are going to come in handy uh, an 18 millimeter open end wrench. Um, now, you can buy a um, caliper or piston compression tool, which you will need to do the brake pads, or you can use a C-clamp with just a little piece of wood or something stiff here. That's It's like a, you'll see when I get into the brake job here, if you've never done this before, you'll use this to compress the piston back into the, uh, um, the caliper there, uh, because the brake pads that you have now are worn down thinner, and the new brake pads we're putting in are thicker, and so you need to get that piston compressed all the way back in. Um, and I'll put a link in the description to the actual tool. There's a tool, it's not very expensive to do this, um, or you can just use this. Uh, this is what I do, C-clamp and piece of wood. So um, It's also a good idea to have just a little tube of white grease or a big tube of it, whatever. Um, there are some lubrication points on the brake pads that uh, that you'll need to, uh, to grease up a little bit, and so uh, this white grease works fine for that. Um, it's also a good idea to have some um, thread locker, uh, you know, there's a couple bolts on there that uh, you just want to make sure those don't come loose. Obviously, brakes being kind of important on a vehicle, and so having some thread locker is a good way to go as well. Um, I'll put again links to this stuff in the description um, over on Amazon. Now, another thing that I do because um, some of these bolts uh, on the actual caliper um, assembly is pretty they're pretty hard to get off and so I have uh, a piece of black pipe that I use to get a little extra leverage on some of those and that can definitely save you a lot of um, uh, heartache <laughs> trying to struggle with these things where you've got your your truck jacked up or your uh, your vehicle jacked up so um, as far as the parts I'm using AC Delco stuff here you know OEM stuff um, I bought all these on Amazon I found that to be the cheapest place so you can actually if you check the links in the description you can get everything you need for this job and have it shipped to you in, in two days um, for free so uh, brake pads they you know, come with both halves of the, the brake pad and then the uh, clips uh, that you'll need as well and it's nice because it does have all the lubrication points right on the box so you know what you need to to kind of grease up as you take things apart and I'm also doing the entire rotor here um, the rotor is uh, um, not necessary to be replaced unless you've let your brake pads wear too too long and you've got grooves. Um, also, if you're noticing a lot of waviness in the um, you know the pedal when you're stopping, a lot you might have a roped uh, or a warped rotor, and so you might want to replace them as well. Um, our vehicle has over 100,000 miles on it, and so I will be replacing these um, because they are a little bit grooved, and um, I like to get uh, fresh parts on while I have everything taken apart anyway so these are a little more expensive though um, again link for these on the uh, in the description over on Amazon 
All right, so first thing we're gonna do here is get the caliper taken off, and there's two 14 millimeter uh, bolts, one on the bottom, one at the top. We're gonna get those taken off first. Um, there's also a nut on the inside of this that if that starts to rotate, you can use that 18 millimeter open end wrench to hold that uh, still. Um, but uh, these broke loose without me doing that, and then I just hold it with my fingers to get it off. Caliper should wiggle free. And you want to make sure you don't drop this or let any tension on it because you got your, your brake line connected. So just sit it up here on top of everything. Make sure it doesn't fall off. You use a piece of wire to tie it down if you need to. And next thing I'm going to do is there's two 21mm uh, nuts back behind here. And they hold the whole um, brake pad bracket um, on. So we're going to take that off next. All right, once those bolts are loose, set those aside. And the whole bracket that holds the brake pads should come out here now. So we've got that out, and I'll show you how to get the new brake pads put in. Okay, so the brake pads themselves, you can just tap out of here. And you can see those were totally smoked and that's why my rotors were starting to get wrecked. Okay, and then we've got these clips here. They just pop right out. That's the old clip. And then the new clip, it's identical. And they just kind of snap into place here. You can kind of feel them. It's two little two little flaps off this bracket that kind of fall into a, a notch there. So that's good. We'll get the other side off. Okay. So I like to put a little bit of white grease on the tops of these brackets. Um, the brake pads are going to be sliding on those, so that's a little bit too much. We'll just use that on the other side here. But the brake pads kind of slide back and forth on those so okay so these pads that i got they as far as i can tell they are um, identical and so there's not one that has to go on one side or the other and so obviously you're going to match the shape of the uh you know put them in this way to match the shape of the uh rotor there and the brackets and these will just get pushed in you want to leave these all the way to the outside of your bracket. So those will just sit right in there for now. Now you also have these these pistons. So this whole thing, as the piston or the uh, the piston, you know, compresses it, this whole bracket moves just a little bit. Okay, and so these actually slide. And there's these little rubber boots here. Now, if these are ripped or anything, you want to get replacements for them. But you can pop these off. And you can see there's grease on here. So we need to pull these out. Kind of suctioned in there. And we can get a little bit of grease on these. Now, the other grease point is... The, the piston is going to be right on sitting on this brake pad as well as the arms on the other side of it and you just don't want that to seize up or rust on there or anything like that so you can put a bunch of grease all over the front of these pads on each side Okay, so if you're just doing the brake pads, you can ignore this part, but I'm going to be replacing my rotor here. Um, and so there's that T30 Torx bit right here. Um, it, it really shouldn't be on there super tight. So you can hold the whole caliper with your knee or hand or whatever and just break that loose. All this does is just holds the rotor in place while you're putting it on taking it off. I don't see any real other purpose for it. It's so the lug nuts and tire hold this thing flat. So... Um, and just a little screw it'll come out and here's the the fun part 
so what happens is these the rotor is is rusted right to the the hub the wheel hub and so you need to break that loose now if you're not a very good shot you might want to put your your lug nuts back on you know but we're gonna we're gonna be risky today so the idea is to just tap it right on in between each one of these and eventually it will come loose and you can wiggle it right off so this is where on the rear brakes there's a I think this is an emergency brake in here and it's a good idea just to throw a little bit of brake cleaner WD-40 on the spring and stuff like that here um, just to help make sure this stuff doesn't seize up because you probably don't use it very often. There's one on the bottom too. Okay, and the new new rotor will go right back on here. You just want to make sure you line up that hole for the little um, torque screw. And there's also this little rubber grommet that uh, covers the other hole. I just took this off the old one. There's two holes in this new rotor. And we can just put our torque screw back in here. All right, here's where our clamp comes in handy. So we'll take our piston out here and there's a flat spot right on the back of this so we just use a piece of wood here in between that so once you get your clamp and everything into place here basically you're just gonna slowly tighten this down and you can see it'll start to compress that piston and you want to you have to reposition a couple times that you want to press that just slowly all the way in until it won't go in anymore, all the way in flush with the with the bracket. And we're just about there. And that's it. Alright, so on these 21 millimeter bolts here, this is where our, our thread uh, keep what you call it thread sealant, uh, thread locker. Just put a little bit, oh it's hot, that stuff is thin. Just put a little bit on the on the bolts here. Um, these that's one of the reasons why these are a little harder to get off because they generally have a thread locker on them. So get those pre prepped and ready here. We're going to put our uh, bracket back on and then the caliper will go on after that. All right, next we're going to get the caliper back on here. And that should fit over the top of your brake pads now. Might need to push them in a little bit. And I didn't put any Loctite on these, or thread locker on these. They didn't have any on before, so um, these are different. And I think these will be just fine without it. And we're just using our 14 millimeter wrench here to tighten those back up and our 18 millimeter open end here to hold that bolt. Make sure those are nice and tight. I'm not using a torque wrench on anything here. I should be. I'm not going to deny that. But in most cases I've just never needed to have one so I don't have one. But uh, if you want to do this to manufacture spec I would recommend getting a torque wrench in following the manufacturer recommended torque on all these bolts and that pretty much wraps it up the main part of the job here obviously we need to get our tire back on and always remember to uh, tighten your lug nuts back onto the tire in a star pattern you never want to just tighten around in a circle uh, most people know this but uh, just to 
to cover all our bases here um, you want to tighten you know this one down then this one 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 and then go back around and do the same thing uh, that just makes sure that you don't end up with a, a warped uh, rotor um, or your tire ends up uh, getting bound on one of the lug or the st posts here um, if you do it on one side before the other and then it doesn't get tightened all the way and it ends up being on an angle so um, that's the way you you properly put on a, a tire but a uh, very easy job here it took me um, you know all in all probably getting everything out putting everything away about an hour to do both sides um, and the parts are are very inexpensive as far as the job is concerned and you can save yourself about 50 percent of what you'd pay uh, a shop to do this um, don't be lured in by all the you know the sales and scams, not scams, but the sales and stuff like that, you're generally getting cheaper pads and cheaper rotors and stuff when they have, you know, these $50 rake jobs and stuff. So uh, just be aware of that and know what you're getting and know what you're putting on your vehicle and know how it's done. Uh, do it yourself. All right, well, that wraps it up for this video. Um, it's a very basic process, like I said. You know, it doesn't require a lot of uh, skill. It's very, very easy to do. Just about anybody can do this with very simple tools. All the parts and tools that you might need are available on Amazon. And again, I put links in the description. We do get credit for those clicks. Uh, um, and that's where I buy just about all of my parts unless, like, you know, they don't have it on Amazon or I can find it cheaper at uh, O'Reilly's or AutoZone or something like that. But I found Amazon to have good parts and they may always match up with the vehicle. They're very easy to find online and so that's where I use uh, what I normally use so links to all those things in the description uh, if you guys have questions about the process or comments or anything to add you know if you're a mechanic watching and I missed something or left something out that you normally do I am NOT a mechanic so uh, go ahead and throw that in there guys I'd love to hear it share that with everyone else as well um, but uh, as always uh, you know hit thumbs up on the video if you found it informational if it helped you out I'd love to hear your, your story of how you know the, the video helped you um, and always subscribe to the channel if you want to follow along we've got all kinds of other suburban uh, activities and uh, how to's and DIY stuff and gardening and all kinds of things that you, you, you never know what you're gonna find here so subscribe and follow along I'd love to have you have you take along so as always guys thanks for watching have a good one